Okay, so this is problem 3-7. So we have a semicircular line charge here. So line charge, we're given the line charge density uh, and the radius B of our semicircle. It's in the upper half of the xy plane, so positive half. So we need to figure out the magnitude and the direction of the electric field intensity, and we need to find it at the center of the semicircle. So we have our general field for the electric field, our general equation for electric field intensity, and we are going to find the components that we don't have. So we are given this PL uh, by the problem. Uh, this means PL is a function of R, so just the same as PL here. Uh, then we need to find this R minus R prime. So we don't have, we don't have this R minus R prime uh, here, and then we don't have our DL element. So we're going to look at the figure. So R minus R prime, we're always going from the charged element to the point that we're trying to measure uh, the E field at. So our charged element is this uh, DL half circle line. So R minus R prime, how do we get from this uh, charged element to this point? Well, we're by convention, R hat is positive and pointing out. So we're going to need to go in the negative R hat direction and we're going and B is our magnitude. So B in the negative R hat direction is how we're going to get to this point here where we're measuring the E field. So that's our R minus R prime, negative B in the R hat direction. Okay. Now we need the magnitude of that, and so that's just the square root of the component squared. We only have one component, so that's going to be b. Okay, and we're going to plug that into our equation. Next, let's look at our dl element. So this little uh, like prime notation just means referring to the charged element uh, when you see it in the equation. That's why this r prime means the charged element. Uh, so that's what that little v prime is. Okay, so our dl is r d phi. Um, uh, our r in this case is b. And our d phi is what's changing. So when you need to find arc length, uh, arc length is going to be equal to a radius times an angle. So radius times an angle is going to give you this length, right? And that's the differential length that we want here. So uh, if L is equal to r phi, dl is equal to r d phi, right? Because the angle is what's changing, the radius is going to stay the same uh, all along this line. Radius is the same. Okay, in this case, our radius is equal to b. So let's go ahead and plug in everything that we found so far into our general equation. So we have e. I'm going to change this to the right color here. Okay. So we have e is equal to 1 over 4 pi e naught. And then that's going to be, let me put in a pl here. So pl, uh, and then r minus r prime is negative b in the r hat direction. And then divided by b to the third, and then our dl is equal to b d v prime. Okay, and we still have that integral there. So let's simplify a lot of things here. So we have e is equal to 1 over 4 pi e naught, and then our integral, uh, and then let's pull out the negative, and then we have b squared over b to the third, so it's going to turn into 1 over b, uh, and then we have d v in the r hat direction. Okay, so we can also pull out our b because it's not part of our, our integral. So pi e naught, and then we have b, and then integral of d phi r prime, okay, or r hat. So, okay, there's a trick here uh, for this where we need to convert r hat to the x and y directions. Um, and the reason we need to do that is because we're concerned about the E field components that don't cancel, right? So our X components, a lot of them are going to cancel because when we have uh, vectors going in this direction and this direction, they have an X and Y component, and these X components are symmetrical, meaning that they're going to cancel. So I'm going to scroll up and kind of show you the resulting E field. So when we look at these radiating E fields, imagine like this is just a bunch of positive point charges all stuck together because that's really what it is. And these um, field lines are repelling each other. And so as a result, this is what the field line behavior looks like. So when we model them, we model them like to a point and we model the X and Y vectors just going straight to that point. And so our resulting field line has to be the elements that don't cancel. And that's going to give us an accurate representation of the field behavior at that point. So we need the x and y components because we need to look at the x components that cancel to try to figure out um, where our e-field is going to be. In this particular case, solving it in the, uh, with an r-hat direction 
is not going to give us what we want because that's a radiating um, field. So it's just going to basically give us like a negative pointing in field, but that's not uh, what we need for this point. So we need to convert it to X and Y. So you need to understand a little bit about field behavior. If this um, is overwhelming for you, just remember that this is always what you would do for this type of a problem. Okay, so I kind of put the solution for our hat in here. I will put a cheat sheet in the description that kind of has how to convert um, unit vectors. There's a table that I've used in previous videos, so you just have a reference to where all that information comes from. Okay, so we have E is equal to negative 1 over 4 pi u naught b. And then we have the integral of cosine of phi x hat plus sine of phi in the y hat and then by d phi. Okay, and then what's our range for phi here? Well, um, we only have half of a circle. So full circle is 0 to 2 pi. So half circle, we're just going to go from 0 to pi here. Okay, um, so the... I'm just checking that we're in the right track here. Yep, okay. So we're going to go ahead and solve... Oh, I forgot... I dropped PL here. Oops. PL. Yep, I just forgot to pull it out. It was here, and I forgot to pull it out there. Okay, so um, E is equal to negative PL over 4 pi u naught B, and then our solution here, we have sine of phi from 0 to pi plus just the integral solution. Oh, sorry, minus cosine of phi from 0 to pi, and this is in the x hat direction, this is in the y hat direction. All right, so we're going to end up with uh, 0 minus 0, and then the x hat, uh, and then we're going to end up with minus negative 1, minus negative 1 uh, in the y hat direction over, so negative pl pi u naught b and then multiplied by this so i'm getting a little sloppy towards the end i apologize all right and then our resulting fields we're going to cancel so this is going to be two so e is equal to pl multiplied by two over four pi u naught b so e is equal to negative pl over two pi u naught and just checking here, and the y component was what stayed, right? Because this is going to turn into 2, 2, and then in the y hat direction. So notice that we have an E field that's in the negative y hat direction. And from what we understand about how these um, fields behave for the semicircle, that makes sense to us, because that's what we're expecting to see here. All right, um, so that is the solution for this problem. So just a couple of small tricks to remember that you need to convert this R, um, and then just be careful with your simplifying here and understand how to find these R minus R prime values and your DL.